Istanbul, a city that perfectly blends its rich history with modern vibrancy. Walking through the bustling streets, I was immersed in a culture that radiates warmth and hospitality, with every corner offering a glimpse into its storied past. From the majestic Hagia Sophia to the mighty Bosphorus Strait, yet amid these historical treasures, modern Istanbul shines with its cafes, vibrant art scenes, and sunny skyline. The juxtaposition of ancient landmarks and contemporary allure makes Istanbul a unique and unforgettable destination that truly lives up to its reputation as a city where the East beats the West. After traveling for an entire day, skipping five time zones, and while having a quick layover in Dubai, I finally arrived in Istanbul, Turkey. Wow, I can't believe I'm finally here in Istanbul. It's my new country to visit, and I'm staying here for a week. Istanbul Airport is 31 kilometers away from downtown Istanbul. Okay, done with claiming my baggage and I'm off to go. And I'm still figuring out how to get out of this airport because the airport is actually 31 kilometers away from the downtown area. That's where my hotel is located. They say that I can just book a taxi. As the crowds got bigger and the streets got narrower, I caught a glimpse of Istanbul and I couldn't believe that I was finally here. It's always been my dream to visit the city. I stayed in the Sultanahmet area, one of the city's oldest districts. Well, I wasn't informed that the streets were narrow, paved with cobblestones and inclined by at least 25 to 30 degrees. Okay, so I finally got into my hotel. It's um, right at the heart of Istanbul, but I didn't know that the uh, property around the hotel, there's like a lot of terrain going on so, and there's like a lot of unpaved roads as well. Or not really unpaved, but uneven pavement, if you put it that way. So, and plus the, um, the hotel didn't have any elevators, so it was quite a challenge. It was um, a bit of an exercise going here. But yeah, without further ado, room tour. So the room is actually um, just the right size. You know, I mean, like, I'm all alone, but I have the entire double bed by myself. It has four pillows, comes with free um, towels and um, slippers. Also has a TV, but I'm not sure if I'm going to wash something. And this is the bathroom. Yeah, pretty much basic, but it has everything. So I'm glad that I chose this hotel. But the best part of this room is that I have a balcony. So they upgraded me for free which is a very nice gesture without an additional price. Oops. And this is my view. Wow, I'm just, <laughs> and I'm not sure what, what's the name of this temple, but yeah, I'm pretty close to almost everything. So there you have it. Um, this is a room tour. I'm going to take a shower in a while, but we're going to talk about more stuff. It's been, what, the entire day? traveling from Manila all the way to Istanbul via Dubai, but I'm glad that I'm here. After settling my things, I had my first dinner at a Turkish resto just a block away from the hotel. I ordered a donut kebab. Beer. And an ice cream. and it was a bit expensive.
I'm now walking to the Hagia Sophia. It's only a 10 minute walk from my hotel, but I wasn't informed that this area is full of hills, like it's an inclined plane. Like I am all tired right now from just walking 100 meters. <laughs> but yeah, today is not really super hot. It's only 29 degrees, but yeah, I'm visiting the temple and I'm wearing like this one. Not wearing shorts because I learned my lesson the hardest way when I was in Anzo in temple in Japan. So yeah, let's go and explore one of the most iconic landmarks here in Istanbul. Stepping into the Hagia Sophia, the Blue Mosque and the Basilica Cistern felt like diving into the pages of a Dan Brown novel, with every turn revealing another layer of Istanbul's hidden stories. After three attempts of paying online, I'm finally here, and we're now on our way to the oldest um, temple or mosque here in this region. Wow, this is like a lifelong dream. I can't believe that I'm here. <laughs> so excited. I couldn't help but feel a surge of excitement as I walk beneath the grand domes of Hagia Sophia, imagining centuries of whispers echoing off its ancient walls. Behind me is the um, prayer area. This is the second floor, so more or less this is like the museum part. I'm not sure if they're not are allowed to go to the ground floor because that's a prayer area for our Muslim brothers and sisters. But wow, this is unbelievable. This is Simit. This is like a bagel. Let's try. Oh, that's good. It's only 15 Turkish lira. So today we're now going to Blue Mosque. It's just right across um, Hagia Sophia. And it's also like another landmark here in Istanbul. The intricate tiles of the Blue Mosque dazzle me. A kaleidoscope of history unfolding beneath my feet. One of the main characteristics of um, Turkish architecture, especially the temples or the mosques, are the minarets. Uh, behind me is one of the minarets. It's usually located at the corners of the uh, building or the perimeter itself. So, yeah, that's why the Hagia Sophia the Blue Mosque and other mosques here in Istanbul look really familiar with each other. <laughs> okay, now we're going to Basilica Sister. And one thing that I like about my hotel's locations is that everything's like close to everything. So this is not super difficult to roam around. It's um, very accessible to, to almost every um, tourist attractions here and famous landmarks here in Istanbul. If you want to skip lines here in Basilica Sister, you need to buy your tickets online. It costs 27, 15 euros. Yes, it is very expensive, but yeah, we're already here, so why not buy tickets? You know, anyway, we're going to explore Marvis Cistern. It's very interesting to see um, the history behind this uh, important landmark here in Istanbul. And descending into the cool depths of the Basilica Sister, I half expected to uncover a forgotten secret. My heart be quickening like Robert Langdon on the cusp of a great discovery. The golden hour showed its glory, but its time was only limited. Then the sky turned to a dark turquoise hue like the deep ocean the elusive blue hour. I sprinted from the Yenikapi Sahir Park to two of the most iconic landmarks of Istanbul, Hagia Sophia and Blue Mosque. The vibe was completely different, less crowded, and people were not in a hurry. The orchestra of the birds and the Muslim prayers sang harmoniously in an open clarity of blue hour. The dark torquoise view of the sky is as deep as how our culture and history have gone through and how our ancestors have fought and shaped Istanbul as it is today. 
Islam and Catholic influences shape both architectural wonders, hence these two get the best of both worlds. Okay, so another day here in Istanbul. This time we're gonna walk to the tram station and I'll be going to the Taksim Square and do some shopping and explore that area. Taksim Square is one of the most famous and central locations in Istanbul, Turkey. It served as a hub for locals and tourists, and is known for its vibrant atmosphere. We're now here at Taksim Square. It's um, <laughs> literally a square. And this reminds me of Plaza Independencia in Barcelona, but the architecture obviously is quite different. We're going to Istiklal Avenue. Uh, there's like a lot of shops and restaurants to try around the area. So, yeah, we'll see. There's like a lot of kebab places here. I'm craving for one. <laughs> Modern and historical buildings include hotels, shops, and cultural centers surround the square. At the heart of Taksim Square is the Republic Monument, commemorating the Turkish Republic's founding. Taksim is also the starting point of the bustling Istiklal Avenue, a lively pedestrian street filled with shops, cafes, restaurants, and historical landmarks. The square has been a focal point for various public events, celebrations and political demonstrations, making it a symbolically significant place in Turkey's modern history. Today we're going to the uh, Pera Musezi. It's uh, one of the contemporary art museums here in Istanbul. Pera Museum, located in the vibrant Biyoglu district of Istanbul, is a contemporary art museum that seamlessly blends the old with the new. Housed in a beautifully restored 19th century building, the museum offers a dynamic mix of traditional and modern art, featuring a diverse collection that spans Ottoman-era masterpieces, Anatolian weights and measures, and Kutaya tiles, alongside rotating exhibitions of contemporary works by both Turkish and international artists. With its engaging programs and thought-provoking exhibitions, Petra Museum is a cultural hub that celebrates Istanbul's rich artistic heritage while embracing the innovation of modern art. Okay. No. Yes. No. Thank you. Ah. Oh. <laughs> so I finally tried the Turkish ice cream, and this is vanilla flavor. The texture is really thick, like even under um, extreme weather, like uh, hot weather, it doesn't melt easily. So, mm. yum, but it's a hundred because you paid for that um, gimmick. <laughs> 
We're now ready to go and we're going to explore the Asian side of Istanbul. So today we're going to cross the Bosphorus Strait and I'm so looking forward for that trip. Istanbul is divided into two sides by the Bosphorus Strait, the European side and the Asian side. We have just arrived at the second adjustment station and from here we'll walk to uh, the marketplace. I explored the old town of Katakoy on the Asian side. The cacophony and the aroma of spices reminded me of home, where everything's familiar and comforting. We're now here at the waterfront. It's so fantastic here. So there's like less people, but I'm thinking of having a coffee somewhere else. No doubt this place is very beautiful and I had my me time there at the cafe right behind me. So I updated my journal and some stuff as well. So we're now headed to Gadikoi and catch a ferry back to the European side of Istanbul. And hopefully I'll wait there for the sunset because I'm a sucker for sunsets. I went to its busy pier and boarded the ferry back to the European side. It felt surreal knowing that I was on two continents within 30 minutes. Istanbul's rich history, culture, and heritage can be traced from the olden times when numerous tribes and civilizations rose and fell, fighting for their political seat and reign. Today, it is a cosmopolitan city where different cultures thrive and live harmoniously. This is kind of like crazy to think because right now I'm in the middle between Europe and Asia. Behind me is the Asian side of Istanbul and this one, that's the European side of Istanbul. It's crazy because I'm between both worlds. I'm blessed to be part of this trip. <laughs> As a tall and prominent minarets tower the city, they stand in resolute togetherness all year round. A stark reminder of how they stood the test of time and how resilient they are with the ever-changing environment. But before anything else, let's talk about the cats of Istanbul. Cats are highly revered animals here and have been a part of Istanbul's culture for centuries. The city has always been a bustling hub with a large population and cats were historically valued for controlling the rodent population, especially during the Ottoman Empire, where they were seen as protectors of food stores and homes. So right in front of me is the grand entrance for the Grand Bazaar here in Istanbul. It's, uh, based on my research, it's like the largest uh, bazaar not just in Istanbul, but apparently in the whole world. So we'll see about that. There's like a lot of maze inside where you can buy lots of Turkish goods. And um, yeah, it's a market so you can haggle the prices. So wish me luck <laughs> because haggling is not really my thing. Wandering through the Grand Bazaar in Istanbul feels like stepping into a living fabric of history and culture. The moment I entered the maze-like expanse of Grand Bazaar, the world behind me faded away replaced by a labyrinth of narrow, winding alleys where the air was thick with the scent of spices, leather, and incense. Every corner reveals a new treasure, a glimmering array of gold jewelry, intricately woven carpets, and vibrant ceramics. Let's try a Turkish coffee, it's 150 Turkish lira. Wow, so strong. <laughs> each style more inviting than the last. The hum of bargaining fills the air, a dance of words between merchants and customers as centuries-old trade traditions continue unabated. We're going to have some lunch here at the sidewalk <laughs> because I was about to go to Spice Bazaar, but I got hungry because it's already past one, so I got the pomegranate juice very refreshing and I had this durum doner for only 200 <laughs> like this is like the cheapest lunch that I could find 
but it's going to be delicious. Wow. I love it. Leaving the Grand Bazaar, I was drawn to the spice market, where the aroma of fresh herbs, dried fruits, and exotic spices creates an intoxicating blend that tingles the senses. The stalls burst with colors, saffron yellow, paprika red, and the deep earthy tones of various teas. Each merchant offers a sample, a taste of Istanbul's culinary soul, from sweet Turkish delights to tangy pomegranate molasses. The market is alive with energy, for it was a feast not just for the palate, but for the spirit, as it connected me to the city's rich past and dynamic present. As I strolled through these iconic markets, I realized that Istanbul is a city where the ancient and the modern coexist. Every step and stride tells a story, and a thrill of discovery lies around every corner. Today, we're going to visit another mosque um, right along the Grand Bazaar neighborhood. This is Suleimani Mosque. It's big. Uh, let's see what it looks like inside. I think we're allowed to go there, and I'm wearing pants, so that won't be a problem. Suleimani Mosque, perched on one of Istanbul's seven hills, is an architectural marvel that reflects the grandeur of the Ottoman Empire. Designed by the famous architect Mimar Sinan, this iconic mosque offers a serene atmosphere with its expansive courtyards, elegant domes, and stunning views of the Golden Horn. The mosque's tranquil gardens and intricate tilework provide a peaceful retreat amidst the city's hustle and bustle. What's up? So, I finally decided to hang out at Pierolotti Cafe. It's only like six stops from the T5 tram line, purple line, or lavender line. And right now we're going to cross the street towards the, um, the elevated uh, tram. I don't know what's the term, but it starts with letter F. I forgot the term already, but if you know that term, just Put that in the comment section down below. Anyway, so it offers a panoramic view of Istanbul. And I need to know another copy. <laughs> yeah, I remember the term. It's not letter F, but it's a cable car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just a short distance away, the Pierre Lotti Cafe, named after the French writer and Istanbul enthusiast, offers a breathtaking panorama of the city from its hilltop perch, with its quaint, nostalgic charm and sweeping views of the Golden Horn. It's the perfect spot to unwind, sip traditional Turkish tea, and take in the timeless beauty of Istanbul. Planning to go to Karakoy district but I'm going to um, take another route. So I asked Google, and this is the fastest route. So, <laughs> as you can tell, this is a Turkish cemetery. It's like the coca all over again. So I found this restaurant at Har Harakoy area, and the name of the restaurant is Super Mario Emin Busta because apparently the owner looks like Super Mario, <laughs> like the Turkish Super Mario. So this restaurant's um, specialty is apparently fish. So I ordered um, seafood bass or a sea bass. And I also have a beer as well. During my trip to Istanbul, visiting the Kora Church, Galata Tower, and Istanbul Archaeological Museum felt like a journey through time. I did some quick change, so I had to buy um, this because I'm just wearing shorts and you need to dress appropriately. So yeah, I have no choice but to buy it, but it's only 60 liras. But the good thing here is that there's no entrance fee, no exorbitant fee of like 50 euros per entry. Once you're here in Istanbul, don't forget to wear at least like long pants and um, a shirt with sleeves before you enter a holy place. At Kora Church, 
I marveled at the stunning Byzantine mosaics and frescoes that vividly depict biblical stories, offering a glimpse into Istanbul's rich Christian heritage. Climbing the Galata Tower, I was rewarded with panoramic views of the city. We're on our way to Galata Tower, and the way up to the tower is like this. I mean, like the usual Istanbul old town streets where it's um, it's not concrete, it's not asphalt, but it's cobblestones. I'm out of breath right now because all the streets here are like inclined, like at least 30 degrees. Capturing the unique blend of ancient and modern that defines Istanbul. At the Istanbul Archaeological Museum, I explored a vast collection of artifacts spanning thousands of years, from Greek and Roman sculptures to treasures of the Ottoman era, each piece narrating the diverse history of this remarkable city. As I stood on the Galata Bridge, watching the sun sink slowly behind the hills of Istanbul, the city seemed to pause, caught between the fading lights and the gathering night. The golden horn shimmered beneath me, its waters reflecting the warm hues of orange, pink, and gold. Boats glided lazily across the water, their wakes creating ripples that danced in the twilight. The call to prayer echoed from distant minarets, a reminder that time flows differently here, measured not by hours, but by the rhythm of life itself. As the sky deepened into a deep, velvety blue, I felt a profound connection to the countless souls who had stood in this spot over the centuries, witnessing the same sun setting over this timeless city. The bustling energy of Istanbul seemed to pause, allowing me a rare moment of introspection. Life with all its complexities and demands, suddenly felt simpler. I realized that travel is not just about seeing new places, but about experiencing moments that shift your perspective and touch your soul. As I watched the sunset from Galata Bridge, I understood the importance of being present, soaking in the beauty around me, and appreciating the fleeting yet eternal nature of such moments. In this city, I was always in awe about how cultures intertwined with each other, and despite the differences, everything worked. In this city, I learned that not all people have bad intentions for you, and it allowed me to meet some of the nicest people in the world. Turkish hospitality is just one of a kind. I will be forever grateful. Istanbul, with its vibrant spirit and rich history, gifted me a memory that would forever be etched in my heart. The city's rhythm, its heartbeat, had synced with mine, reminding me that no matter where I go, there is always beauty to be found and lessons to be learned. I'm trying this sutlaj. Um, it is a rice pudding dessert here at a cafe just right outside um, the mosque. So let's give it a try. When your hotel is just right around the neighborhood, this view will never get old. So amazing. I made it here at uh, Pierre Lotte Cafe and has this perfect view of Istanbul. I'm now in a ferry towards uh, Neminu, but I'm thinking of a body at the Karikoi area. No, it's Karakoi. <laughs> kind of like confused with the names, but yeah.
Apparently, I can go there because um, I can easily blend with the locals because of my facial features, but we're not using that to get today. We're a good bar right now. I'm now here at the terrace.